This story is based on the true events of a terrible plane crash that happened here in Chichester in 1944 during the Second World War. Bombing raids were common across the country and Chichester was the site of several bomb attacks, thankfully with very little loss of life. Chichester is based near the coastline and so in World War II was the home to the 1st Battalion Sussex Home Guard a group of men unable to serve their country, but who volunteered to protect the coastlines and major industrial areas to enemy attacks. One day, a member of the Home Guard, Captain Gerald Brown, and his platoon were patrolling the fields on the outskirts of Chichester. They were near the site of the old Roman amphitheatre, scanning the skyline for signs of enemy aircraft. We spent lots of time out here searching for the enemy. You see, with the last line of defence, a very important work. You never know when one of these German spies you hear about will manage to sneak into the country undetected, but we'll be here to stop him, don't you worry. This particular story occurred on the 11th of May 1944, when Lieutenant Joseph Duncan and his crew were returning to England after being sent on a secret mission in Europe. At around midday, Captain Brown and his team, including Sergeant James Galligan, noticed a B-24 Liberator bomber aircraft flying across the sky, heading out to sea. Here, look at that, sir. That's one of them American planes. I bet it's off on a secret mission on its way to help finish this war. The captain and the sergeant took the time to watch the plane flying back out to sea, imagining all the adventures the crew on board would soon be getting up to. As they were stood there watching, however, the plane began to change its course. Not only that, but a small plume of smoke started to escape from the back of the plane. Well, what's going on here then? Why would they be coming back inland? Y you don't suppose the German spies are here already, do you? All of a sudden, there was an almighty bang! <laughs> and part of the plane exploded in midair. The Home Guard officers all jumped in fright, terrified the plane was going to crash straight into the centre of Chichester. But all they could do was watch in fear as the plane hurtled towards them, falling to the ground, billowing smoke and flames and eventually crashing with a colossal blast onto the site of the old Roman amphitheatre, raining down shrapnel and ash around them. Sergeant Galligan and Captain Brown immediately sent the rest of their party to the crash site to check for any casualties and call the fire wardens. Out of the corner of his eye, Captain Brown noticed some movement in the sky. One by one, men began to drop out of the air, floating down on big parachutes. What's this? What are those things floating from the sky? Oh, save themselves, I see, instead of stopping that plane from crashing into the ground. Oh, I ought to... But just then, he paused, stopping mid-sentence. Sergeant James Galligan looked round and saw the beginnings of a frown on the captain's face. What's wrong, sir? Uh, right, Sergeant. Uh, weapons at the ready. The only reason I can see why those men jumped out of the plane is because they're German spies. Follow me. We will interrogate them. Make them admit their crimes. So off they went to investigate. They crouched down so as not to be seen and crept up on the group of soldiers from behind. As soon as they had approached, they jumped up from behind a hill, guns raised. They shouted for the soldiers to drop their weapons and put their hands up. The soldiers were all black from soot. Some of them were tangled in their parachute cords and one of them seemingly passed out on the floor, his leg twisting in an unnatural angle. They slowly turned and raised their hands looking nervously at each other, raising the home guard's suspicions. Looking around, the captain realised one of the men had a pilot's uniform on and so dragged him forward and told him to explain himself. Calm down, sir. We've done what you've asked and discarded our weapons. Our plane has crashed and we are lucky to escape with our lives. My lieutenant, Chester Evans, has broken his leg and passed out on impact. He needs medical attention, sir, right now. We are American soldiers, returning to base after a mission deep in enemy territory. If that's the case, we'll be very happy to assist you, comrade. Uh, just say the code word, so we know that you're telling the truth, and we'll get this chap the help he needs. Um, I can't remember what the code is. Anyway, move out of my way. We've got to head back to base. 
This inability to answer the question left the home guard very suspicious of the group of soldiers they saw in front of them. They knew that all Air Force sent from the base at Appledram near Chichester Harbour were given a special code word before they left on a mission to ensure their safety in cases of potential friendly fire. Surely they would know it if they are who they say they are. The soldier on the ground did look to be in dreadful pain. The home guard gave the soldiers one more chance to tell them the code word, which today was bananas, in the hope that this could all be resolved quite quickly. There was a lengthy pause. Unfortunately, the pilots still failed to answer. The pilots fumbling about the code word only increased the captain's suspicions, and he turned his attention to the other members of the crew. You there? What's your name? Technical Sergeant Francis Miller, sir. Well then, Technical Sergeant Miller, answer me some questions. Why should I not believe you to be a German spy if you cannot even give me the secret code word? Where were you heading, anyway? And why did you head back to land? Our destination location is classified. Classified? Our plane was hit by a bomb on the way back, and so we set it to fly over the channel to crash in the sea, but it righted itself and crashed on land. I promise, sir, we're not German spies. The poor home guard were losing their nerve in the face of the soldiers' confidence. Maybe they weren't spies after all. But why didn't they know the code word? It was just so convenient that their destination was classified too. But Captain Gerald Brown wasn't the type to back down from a fight and was a man of his principles. Quick, Private Walker, run back to the village hall and telephone HQ at once. Tell them we have German spies in our grasp and they must come at once. We have our weapons on them, but we need help transporting them to the prisoner camp. Yes, sir. All at once, the men from the aircraft started shouting all over each other, clamouring for their voices to be heard. Now, just a second. What do you think you're doing? We are American soldiers. This is outrageous. The injustice. How dare you arrest us? We're American. Prove it. Tell us the code word. Unbeknownst to the rest of the group, Lieutenant Chester Evans had in fact woken up and was mumbling and groaning in the corner. I ought to call the Air Chief Marshal and have you arrested. Bananas! All of a sudden, everyone went quiet and stared at Chester in surprise. The captain was speechless. He had exactly the right code word. Perhaps they weren't German spies after all. The rest of the crew then turned to look at the captain, an angry glint in their eyes whilst the captain and the sergeant look sheepishly on. Yes, yes. Uh, well, you can never be too careful. Uh, uh, carry on, then. Um, I was just testing you, and, um, uh, well, you passed with flying colours. <laughs> Splendid, yes. So even after all the confusion and suspicion, the plane crash really had been caused by American pilots. One of their engines in their plane had exploded, causing them to set it on course out to sea in the hope it would crash into the channel. Then they escaped out the back with parachutes. But sadly, the plane came back around and crashed into the city electric laundry by Chichester's old Roman amphitheatre, killing one person and injuring 39. All those on board the plane did survive, allowing them to keep fighting for our freedom and take part in many missions that eventually defeated the German forces and ended the war. Hurrah! Hurrah!